Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and welcome to another video on the Golang series. Now the next video, in the next video I want to spend more time on the code editor, want to write some code and show you some of the hidden aspect of the Golang. So in this video we will be spending more time in reading the documentation, exploring a little bit on that and some presentation too. So let's move ahead. Now the very first thing I want to bring your attention on is this first line here. We have written this main up here and we had a small discussion about the semicolons and as you might have already noticed that there are some places where you can put semicolon, you're allowed to do so, but on some places you shouldn't be putting up semicolons like all these parentheses they start and end and something like this place, uh, writing semicolons makes no sense and also it's not correct as well. Now moving on, there is a place where you can put up these semicolons. For example, here I can go ahead and put up semicolon and this is perfectly valid. In fact, this is the valid syntax. Without the semicolon, that is not a valid syntax. But you might have noticed as soon as I save this file, since I've installed the Golang IntelliSense by the Golang team itself, it automatically removes my semicolon. But there are some places where it is not automatically going to remove it. For example, the for loop, a special syntax of if loop, so what is going on and how is it removing it and still the code is working fine? Now the actual answer is that you should be putting up semicolon at every single place. But eventually team realized that there are some places where you shouldn't be putting up so that Lexer can come in and put up this. Now before we go there, I would like to bring you on to the official documentation of the Golang so that instead of just me saying anything, you read this directly from the documentation itself. So let's click up onto the documentation section and this is the thing which is moreover like the grammar of a language. So this is usually defined in the specs of the language itself. So we need to go up here and find the where the language specification is. Here it is, and I'm gonna scroll it up. In fact, I can move this a little bit up here so that you can easily see this. So notice here, source code representation, characters, letters, and digit, and just where the lexical element is. And remember, there is a lexer. I'm gonna briefly tell you what that is, but in the lexical element section, notice here the semicolons here. Now in the semicolon says, the formal grammar uses semicolon. Absolutely clear. So According to the official rules and the specs of the language, you need to use semicolon. But there is a thing in the language which is known as lexer. In case you don't know what the lexer is, every single language, whether C, C++, Java, JavaScript, has a lexer. The job of the lexer is to simply understand that you are following the grammar of the language so that your syntax is correct, or at least the variable that are defined are properly defined and stuff. So before the pre-compilation of the language happens, the lexer goes in and try to just say that, hey, are you following the rules or not? Now this doesn't protect you from the other uh, kind of problems that your code might be having, like logical issues and other stuff. But this is the basic idea of the lexer. So what this lexer does, that if you install the IntelliSense, then this lexer will automatically be kicked in and every single place where you have put up these semicolons, you don't write them. At the time of lexical uh, going into the lexer, this lexer comes in and manually puts the semicolon for you. So this is the job that lexer is doing for you. Uh, you don't need to worry about them. But also there are a couple of other rules like uh, to allow the complex statement to occupy a single line, a semicolon may be omitted before closing this and this guy. So that's why we saw that we don't put semicolon here or here and that is still fine. So even when the lexer is going and doing it, it's not going to put a semicolon on line five, it will put it up on line six. So this is kind of a behind the scene detail that you should really know. Again, you can go ahead and read more a little bit onto these tokens and stuff. Uh, you probably don't need to, but in case you want to go ahead and do that. Now, this is all about for this video, but I thought we can extend this video a little bit more Can finish up the theoretical section here. So in the next section, we can move on and start writing code itself. For that, uh, we need to go back onto our presentation. Let's move back and talk a little bit onto that. So let's go ahead and talk about the types in the Golang. We will obviously be using a variety of types for writing programs and this is all about it. Now types are case sensitive and sometimes types even define that you're going to make a thing a public or the private itself. The first initial capital letter usually is going to provide the idea that whether the thing is actually public or private. For example, here you can see that in the FMT dot print line, the P is capital allowing that wherever this module was written, this print line function was exported publicly so that anybody can use it. There are definitely some inbuilt uh, function or internal functions that might be helping this print line to print that, but they are not exported because of the first capital character. So keep that in mind, it will eventually come to you. Now, 
in the Golang, variable should be known in advance. So if you're declaring a variable of type integer or string or whatever, uh, you need to define that in advance. But yes, there are other syntaxes which can allow you to predict the types on the go as well. We'll discuss that definitely in the next video. And almost, almost everything in the Golang is a type. Just like in the JavaScript, we see that everything is almost like an object. Almost same goes in here. In the Golang, you're going to see that almost everything is a type here. Now, we're gonna discuss a little bit more on that, uh, what is this exact type, but these are the regular uh, guys who are in the type. So we have strings, we are having Boolean, we got integers, floating, and complex as well. String, you get the idea, the regular strings that you use, the character, set of characters. We will have a code demo on that, so don't you worry. And the Boolean are pretty obvious, true and false value. Integer, we have a whole range of them, int 8, int 16, int 64. They are both signed and unsigned, and I'll give you a brief demo at the time of writing code on that. Uh, surely I'll give you some assignment to read more on that. And then there is a floating, 32 and 64 are there only, and these are the only ones are there. Uh, definitely there are some aliases being involved in that, uh, so we're gonna talk about them as well. Complex numbers, I'm not gonna talk too much. I don't have much ex expertise on that. These are numbers with the imaginary values. You might have heard about them, iotas and stuff. I never got a chance to work with them, so I'll just say that yeah, they exist, but we're not gonna talk much on them. Now, apart from that, there are advanced type as well, like we have arrays, slices, maps, structs, and pointers in the Golang. And don't you worry, we will have a separate dedicated video on each one of them. I just want to give a brief overview that what's available in the language. And we have another types as well, like functions internally are also treated as types so that you can pass them up into functions as an argument or as a return type. So yeah, almost everything is type. We do have channels and mutex and a whole bunch of other things. I don't want you to uh, get too much in detail of that. Just remember they are there and that's all you need to worry about as of now. Uh, we'll be talking about more of the stuff uh, later on, but I think this is it. This is all you need to know at least at, as this of, of time. In the next video, we're gonna create a sample exercise file. We'll have a little bit of fun with these types and we'll explore them a little bit more. Of course, more syntax and go. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed, let me know in the comment section and I'm gonna catch you up in the next video. Thank you.